Hi, I'm Jennifer Lepore, Online Education Manager here at Artist Network, and I have with me here in the studio today, Mark Mahaffey. Thanks for being with us, Mark. You're welcome. And we're so excited. Mark's been here um, for a few days filming some new acrylic videos with us. We've done um, two on understanding values. One is on sort of more of a dramatic contrast of sun and shadow, mm -hmm. and the other one was a great um, moody painting. Both of those were landscapes. And then we did an um, uh, acrylic techniques video that I think everybody should try out, especially if they're just starting with acrylic. And um, so with Mark here, I wanted to just kind of go into a, some more in-depth information about Mark. We actually did a video with you, a couple videos with you previously, a couple years back. Um, you know, dramatic floral yeah. and acrylic, yeah. That's yeah. right, there's the floral yeah. and acrylic and then the um, watercolor, watercolor on, on Yupo. Yupo. Yeah. That's been a that very popular one. Something that we've seen with you here is that you have a few different styles on how you work and um, you also, um, of course, different mediums, always going back and forth, I think, between watercolor and acrylic is what you've said. I also have been talking to you quite a bit about your career as an artist and then the shows that you've been jurying, um, being a juror for the American um, and the National Watercolor Societies. Yeah, that was quite an honor, both of those in one year. Those are yep. huge. What a great experience. And then several other shows I know that you've also juried. Yeah, I, I get to ask the jury quite often. It's, it's a, a hard job, tough job, a lot of responsibility, but also lots of fun to see everybody's paintings. That must be really fun, and I'm sure that, um, and what I wanted to, you to tell our viewers is a little bit about seeing what people turn in to a competition and um, just well, in your I own career, for, like sure. maybe what you look for and then yeah. how you can see progression from this is a great painting from a technical standpoint and then this is a really standout painting and maybe what the difference is between sure, those two. Sure. Well, you know, when I evaluate my own work, it, it gets evaluated the same way I would evaluate anybody else's work. And mm -hmm. the first thing I look for is some kind of emotional connection to the work. And that has a lot to do with the content of the work. Um, and that's different than the subject. Um, for example, if I use a, a floral uh, as, as an example, a, a flower is intrinsically beautiful. Um, but as an artist, I want to see something more than just reporting about the flower. So it could have more to say with uh, how the light hits the flower and the dramatic shadows that result. So that would be the content of the work. And that has more to do with how the artist puts the composition together than just reporting on how they saw it. So I have to have a, an emotional connection and then design enters into the factor. So the elements and principles of design and how the artist puts those together to reinforce the content of the work. And then last, and somewhat separated from those, comes technique, which unfortunately is where the focus of most people's efforts come, is paint handling, um, probably because it's a lot of fun. It's the most fun. But we really make paintings based on um, technique and how that supports design and how design supports the initial concept and the content of the work. And those two things are way more important than technique. Um, technique is just supportive of those first two things. So that's what I look for when I evaluate other people's work. And it's the same thing when I take a look at my work. And is that the same um, philosophy you would use when you are looking at any kind of style, whether it's representational, yeah, abstract? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the elements and principles of design do not change just because we're dealing with um, an, an abstraction of something that is real or a totally non-objective work, where the elements and, uh, of design, the tools, if you were, uh, become the subject, or a representational landscape like the one behind you. Um, the artist is still balancing the same elements all the time. Um, and uh, some artists stick with one and not the other, and I have a tendency to, to jump all around. And I can do that because really it doesn't change much in my own mind whether I'm doing a representational landscape or a totally non-objective painting. I'm still do, engaged in a balancing act um, using the principles of design and my tools, the elements of design, and it's still the same mental process in my head. 
as I, as I jump back and forth. And sometimes I do literally jump back and forth. <laughs> yeah. So do you find um, that you're drawn to a more non-objective or a representation of one or the other? Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Um, when I do representational work, it, it, it's a representation of reality. Mm -hmm. It's my um, representation of reality. So what I do is I, I see the world, I internalize it, and then I share it back out again in terms of my painting. And the painting that I do is the sum total of all the painting that I've done before and, and my life as it is to that point. And it, that changes as I go along. And my non-objective work, um, a totally abstract if you will, and those two terms have become interchangeable, is all internal. So where the first is all planned out via a value plan and a compositional sketch, and then I paint from those, and sometimes even reference photos, my non-objective work is internalized. So I don't start with a pre-plan, and I start much more intuitively. I get paint on the canvas or the paper, and then I react to that. And as soon as I make a change, I make an evaluation because that change changes the total. And then I make the next addition or subtraction based on the sum total. And I keep going back and forth and back and forth until I either totally mess it up or um, declare it done. And so it's just a different way of working. Mm -hmm. And um, some artists do one or the other, and I do both. And I think that both are legitimate. And you do both in both acrylic and in watercolor? Both it doesn't acrylic matter. and watercolor, and sometimes side-by-side -side drafting tables and go back and forth between two different drafting tables and sometimes watercolor here and acrylic here and back and forth between the two because we have drying time. And um, it's, it's not a hard transition for me because, like I said, um, it's, it's the same um, design elements that I'm manipulating and the same design principles that guide those decisions. I think that it's been very interesting um, with you here this last time seeing in acrylics and all the things that you can do. I feel like, especially with your techniques, you know, the basic techniques I can see applied as you're doing your landscapes as well as in your individual video about techniques. And something I was always drawn to was like the textures that you've done. And it looked like um, in the techniques video, you showed us a piece that you were working on that had a lot of acrylic texture. And actually, you were putting metal into that piece as well. It looked yeah. like there was maybe some collage elements you're moving sure. into. Sure, that was a painting yeah. that's in progress. Mm -hmm. I mean, if 100% is done, I'm like 30% into it. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure where I'm going with that piece, although the initial concept, um, and you'll notice there was collage metal. The initial concept came from a uh, tr trip to France. That my wife and I, we took a painting group to France. And, and this year, we celebrated our 40th wedding anniversary. So you notice there was a 41. Mm -hmm. So we're working on the next year. Of course, she keeps putting up with me all these years. You just never know. <laughs> um, so that was the initial concept behind that work. But how I get to the finished state, I'm not entirely sure yet. So I'm working my way through that layer by layer. And that's a different different way of working than a uh, uh, landscape mm -hmm. where I would um, get an idea, work it out in my sketchbook, assign value to all the shapes, and then paint based on that value plan. It's a um, completely um, different, different approach. One's m way more internalized, and the other one I'm using external um, factors to share with whoever wants to take a look. <laughs> well, I enjoyed looking. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun for me too. Well, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Yeah, cross my fingers. <laughs>